Tattoo Talk Tuesday is our little weekly interactive talk show where I take viewers submitted questions and try to lend my experience to you guys as a tattoo collector. So I'm really excited today to have a guest on the show. Um, Chelsea, thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. So last week, some of you guys might know, um, I had a live stream and the final question of the live stream was like, hey, like, you you don't have your neck tattooed. And I was like, can you talk about that? And I was like, I'd love to talk about it, but I wanted to bring somebody on the channel who like could talk about it as an authority. Yeah. Like, what do I know? And I'm like, I have this great friend, Chelsea. And I thought, you know, she should be on. And I texted you and you were super stoked. So I'm totally into it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. yeah, awesome. thanks for coming okay, on. Of so Chelsea, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so, um, well, my name's Chelsea, again. I've lived in Philadelphia now for about three and a half years. Um, I've been getting tattooed probably for almost a decade, and I'm 25, so I got my first illegal tattoo at the age of 15. Uh, I got some of my biggest tattoos in the city, actually, like my hands, my throat, my face. Um, all the big stuff was done in Philadelphia. There's just so many, like, beautiful, talented artists mm -hmm. here that, like, I feel like when I moved here, there was just so much opportunity to get such beautiful work that yeah. I just kind of went for it. And Definitely. It's one of the like best parts of living in the city. That it you is. don't have to go far for something that you really like. And there's just so many different shops and like so many different great artists that you can find any like style of tattooing that you want and somebody who's great at it. So It's great. So I think, you know, when I, met, when I first met you, I met you through Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I actually met you because you like won a contest with the same person who did my cosmetic tattoos, if you guys are familiar. So we both had cosmetic tattooing done by the same artist. And it introduced me to your account, you know, I went through. And you definitely have like a striking presence. Like Thank I you. was scrolling through, I didn't even know you. And I was like, what's this girl's story? I think that, you know, the way you present yourself I feel like a lot of people are watching and they're trying to take you in. What does that feel like? Do you do you definitely feel that as well? Like I think visually people are like, what's this girl's story? I don't, I feel like you can't you can't hide. It's de yeah, it's definitely one of those things I think over the last like year or two that I've started to notice a lot more in my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there was a really long time where I kind of like was able to just like go under the radar and like things were pretty chill but at this point it's at a point where I definitely like can't go out without being stopped whether it's like about my throat or my forehead um my hand tattoos like I'm always engaging in conversation whether it's at like 7-eleven or a show or like somebody pulling up next to me while I'm in my car at a red light I, I ran into Chelsea last night um at the corner store and we were literally in there for like 20 seconds before someone stopped her and they were like, can I talk to you about your face tattoo? It took us no time at all. I feel like a, I feel like I was wearing pajamas and I was like, this woman. Yeah. But you were so chill about it. Like even I'm a little more reserved. And you were like, you like leaned in to like let her observe too. And I was like, Chelsea's that dude. Yeah, I'm pretty good at this point about like handling it and just being really positive. Um, I mean, obviously, like, I've definitely had some bad experiences, like, at the mall, somebody, like, grabbed me by my face and was like, can I look at that? And Ooh. if people, like, get into my personal space like that, then I can definitely, like, flip the switch, but if somebody's just being, like, kind and they ask me if they can see, then I'm, like, the first person to be like, yeah, like, you can look at my hand or, like, get a closer look at my forehead, but, like, them asking is kind of my, like, how I handle it is based on how they ask. I think that's how... Like, I've explored it, I've tried to explore it as best as I can on this channel, but, I mean, in the winter, I'm not even a tattooed person, so yeah. you never have that opportunity? Ever. No, never. It's like, um, I never get the option to, like, turn it off now, so yeah. it's just, like, kind of like a conversation that I know that I'm gonna have at least, like, once, twice, three times, sometimes even more if I'm, like, doing something out in public, so. So where is home for you? Um, I am from Providence, Rhode Island, um, so I'm from the smallest state in the country. Um, the city that I grew up in, I was very fortunate. It is, like, there's RISD and Brown, a lot of art students, like, huge music community, huge art community. Um, so growing up, 
I'm from a really small place, but it felt a lot bigger. Like progressive, like when you go home, is it like troubles back in town or is it's like, I mean, I even at home, like there's a lot of tattooed people there, but like I'm definitely one of the more like modified like people like so, yeah. from Providence, I think like. I never really realized that until I went home to visit and like a lot of weird looks at grocery stores and yeah. like little shops like if you're in downtown it's not like that and like you know everybody's tattooed and like nobody cares but if you go to like a stop and shop five minutes outside of downtown then like you're getting stared at by a lot of old people so <laughs> yeah that's kind of how I felt I was in the Poconos last year and I remember I went to the produce section because I was looking for vegan stuff and already I was like, people know I'm weird. And then I was like, oh shit, and I'm basically naked and covered in tattoos. There was like a dad and his son and they were both like, uh, we'll wait to get avocados. Yeah, like, oh yeah, I'm a freak, I forgot. The reaction that people give you sometimes, like when people are standoffish, always takes me like by surprise because I'm super friendly and like outgoing, but I think people who have this idea in their head just make assumptions that mm -hmm. this person's gonna be like some like Satan worshipping like Satan worshipping Yeah, like running in circles with no shirt on type of thing, <laughs> you know, but that's not how I act at all. I think, you know, a question, even as like someone who has tattoos and I feel like I've been through it and I've been through the like notion and I've spent time with tattooed people, I think I always wanna know how each individual, you know, decides. Mm -hmm. You took the plunge, and so the first face tattoo you got, was it the rose? The first face tattoo I got was actually my forehead tattoo. Okay. Um, so I kind of just went big with the face tattoos right away. Hell yeah. Um, and that was something that I thought about doing for a really long time. Um, my friend Ryan is a tattoo artist at Art Machine okay. um, in Fishtown, and I had this idea in my head, and I kind of told him about it, and he spent a lot of time drawing it, like tweaking it how I wanted it before I actually like dove in. Yeah. But it definitely to this day it was one of like the best decisions I've ever made. So So you were thinking about it for a long time, you went there, your friend did it, which is so much more reassuring too, and that's crazy. So from there, you know, there's there's the cliche questions, but I think, you know, we all we all wonder. Yeah. Were you worried about your future, were you worried about like job placement or were you like, times will catch up with me? Um, I have to say definitely like, I had already had like my hand and my throat tattooed before I tattooed my face, so I already had things that were like, out there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your face, like it's like a whole new ball game. And I definitely was concerned like a few weeks after I got it, just thinking like, okay, like what's gonna happen? Like are people gonna treat me differently? Like our job's gonna look at me differently, like, then the panic kind of set in, but it's been almost two years now, and I have to say, like, I have a really great job, like, in an office, I have really great friends, like, really positive social interaction, and it honestly hasn't negatively impacted me in any way. That's the kind of thing, like, I'll hear a lot of people say, like, wait till you have your career to get these, these, like, crazy tattoos, but it's kind of just, like, what, so when I'm 35, all of a sudden I'm gonna walk out the gate with this crazy tattoo? Right. Like, I feel like now we're alive, we're in our 20s, and it's like, this is the time I wanna have like my best body, like the you tattoos I the want, yeah, like the right. clothes I like to wear. Like, I feel like when I'm in my 40s, I'm gonna be like, I'm just alive still. Yeah. And that's it. No, that's kind of my like whole standpoint on getting tattooed is just like, I am like, the youngest I'm ever gonna be right now, and this is like the prime time of my life. And I was just like, okay, like I'm gonna like make these decisions and just do what I wanna do. And I've definitely gotten some backlash. Like, if I ever get into like an argument with someone that I don't really know, usually their first like oh. argument is like, oh, well, like what possibly could you be doing with your life? You have face tattoos. And I'm like, actually, I'm doing a lot of really great things with my life, and I have a lot of really great hobbies, and like, a really great job and I'm happy so it's not like what people think it is and I mean that's always just like some filthy thing too I mean I feel like I had an ex and I like would fight with my mom when I was younger and I feel like he would be like well your mom and I'd be like oh come on like, the thing ew, like come on like that yeah. the fucking thing yeah we all fight with our mom when we're teenagers it's we ha you have to do it yeah Ugh. people are the worst, the thing. Don't bring up the thing. So, 
And that's how I feel too. I mean, I definitely found myself in a career lane that like celebrates like personal expression and stuff, but honestly, those are the only jobs I want. So even if I am tattooed and maybe you feel the same way, I am just, that's the track I want to be on anyway. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you have a cool office job. That's super dope. Yeah. And it's not like my career, but like it's a good job and it's a good place. And for what I am like going to school for, I just recently went back to school. Um, it doesn't really matter what I look like. And my thing is, is like, I don't want to be in a line of work or have a career that would limit me from being myself anyways, because I believe that people should have that opportunity in life to just like be who they want and anything that doesn't accept that for me is not something I want to be involved in. Yeah, imagine the people out there who don't have the tattoos they want right? and they just have a, a job they like instead. I don't know. I, I don't know which one I'd rather want. There's a lot of people who do that, but it's just like for me, like my personal path, like I didn't You came want that. first. Yeah, yes. it was me first before any of that. And I think self-expression is something that some people are willing to wait on and then what? How long do you wait? Right. And I mean, everybody has their own form of expression. Like, I have some friends who are like amazing painters and like amazing drawers and like people who write and everybody has their own thing and this just kind of worked out to be my thing at this point. Um, and I didn't even really think of it, but it just became mm -hmm. part of me, so. That's cool. So what inspired you to start getting your neck tattooed and start with your face tattoo? I mean, that we have an episode on the channel about uh, music and tattoos and how music is like a big influence on people and then style is a big influence on people. Do you think that you had a specific influence? Um, I think that growing up like as a kid, um, I, you know, was like a little bit like chubbier. I was like a little chubby scene kid and like, you know, I definitely went through the whole like works of like being like bullied and like made fun of and stuff like that as a child. Um, and a big reason that I started getting like tattooed the way that I am was because I felt like it was something for me that like made me feel beautiful and made me feel good that like I was like completely in control of. Yes. Which was honestly the biggest reason I started doing it. Um, I mean style wise like in a sense of like I like things to be in certain places and look a certain way just mm -hmm. based on like their forever. Um, but it was mainly just because like with that history like it was something in my life that like made me feel really empowered and like really good So I think that tattooing and like body positivity have such like strong connections to each other It's cool that like that's where it came from and that's where it is and I don't know I, I'm so afraid that people are like tattoos. They're, they're ugly. They you've marred your body but there's a whole side of us who celebrate it and we're like, right. no, I look pretty fresh. Exactly. I think that people find beauty in their own ways. And, you know, I've definitely met people who are like, oh, you're such a beautiful girl. Like, why would you do that to yourself? And oh. I'm like, well, like, I'm a beautiful person either way. And I'm sure there are things about yourself that, like, other people might not necessarily like, but you still find beautiful. So, like... Your fur jacket. Yeah, like, it, <laughs> right. It just, like, is one of those things where I think that, like, you just have to realize, like, okay, like, this is who I am, and, like, this is what I want to be, and this is what I'm going to do. And if anybody has anything negative to say, like, it's okay. Just, mm -hmm. like, let it roll. Do you feel like you gravitate more towards, like, tattooed people and people who are more, like, on the heavily modified realm? Like, like maybe dating or, like, when you're looking for friends and stuff? Or does that not really matter to you? And I don't know. I feel like... I'm in a place where I'm like, I hope, I hope people accept my tattoos, I'm so worried. But at the same time, like, I do spend a lot of time with non-tattooed people too, so... Yeah, I mean, I, like, when it comes to, like, friends and stuff, I'm pretty much friends with, like, any types of people at any time. Um, a lot of my friends are, like, heavily modified, a lot of my friends aren't modified at all. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends who are, like, the total opposite of me when it comes to, like, music taste and, like, just, like, general interests. Um, so it doesn't really have to do anything with like, oh, uh, my fault. Yeah, so when it comes to like friends and things like that, I mean, it has no effect. Like if I get along with somebody, then like awesome. Um, but when like dating wise, actually, the craziest thing was that I had never really dated anybody that was like heavily tattooed or like heavily modified until um, I met my partner, like Sasha, who I've been with for four and a half years. Yeah. Um, and we've been together for a long time and we met like he was heavily tattooed and I had like a few tattoos 
Um, and now like we both have like our faces tattooed and like we're both kind of on like the same wavelength. Um, but dating wise, like he was the first person that I had ever dated that like yeah. looked that way. Before that, it was a lot of like tall, blonde, like oh. very normal looking mm -hmm. like people. Um, and I mean, I briefly dated people, you know, this like summer who like have tattoos and like different interests like that. But for the most part, like it wasn't really a thing and it's not something I like look for. And people didn't like put you in a weird light. People weren't like, oh, look at this chick. I mean, people definitely like, I feel like the issue with me with dating is that people definitely sometimes treat me like a trophy prize, oh. which is like really, really hard. Um, that like, this was, is my hot mod girl. Right, and that was like the one thing that I had to adjust to as well, um, was like being in the dating world again and like being like this way and having a lot of people just like the first thing, like even on like Tinder and stuff, like just people being like, oh god, oh, like I love your face tattoo, like oh I love your throat tattoo, like what does it mean, like tell me more, like, and it's hard when people start treating you like you're like a it's prize that rather than like a yeah. person, like they're like, oh this like heavily tattooed girl and you're just like ugh man like I have this a name, tattoo like, joins like, in my interest. DMs yeah. yeah you're like I have like interests and stuff like that aren't about this at all like yeah I feel like when I became single one of the like striking thoughts was I was like fuck how am I gonna explain all this shit and then yeah. it like didn't and then it didn't matter it's just kind of one of those like late night thoughts right do you ever like find yourself like thinking too hard about it oh yeah definitely I mean that's like a biggest a big issue for me is like I don't really settle down or commit to anybody because I feel like something always comes up at some point where they're like, oh like, I like I was dating someone and his nickname for me was Head Tat. Oh uh, no! Like him and his like group of friends like literally his nickname for me was Head Tat. Like you saw that's what he was. When and he I was just like, wait a minute, like I'm like a human being with a name. Um, I'm not like just a head Yikes, tattoo. Dude. Like come on, like. And, like, things like that make you realize, like, how people view you from, like, a, like their perspective when they don't understand, like, why you do what you do. I guess that could be a good thing, because then you could be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah. So, uh, Chelsea and I are both vegan. Do you feel like you may ever put yourself in a box? Because I, sometimes I do, and it's like, you find yourself very niche, like, even when, like, I had facial piercings and stuff and red hair, I was like, okay, this, 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 and also I'm vegan, like, do you feel like you're putting yourself in a box, or is it like, eh, face tattoos and whatever, but here I am? Um, not necessarily, I mean, I've been vegan for like half a decade, so mm -hmm. like for me, um, it's, it kind of just like became part of my identity, and a lot of people get really like confused by that, and it just like, I try to explain like, when you do something for that long, and it's like such a big part of your life, like, it becomes part of who you are. Um, so when it comes to like the veganism and being heavily tattooed, I think years ago, like five years ago when I first started being vegan, it definitely would have boxed me in more, mm -hmm. but there's just so many like heavily modified like vegan people now who like are very open about it and like very out there that I think that it's not as closed off as it once was. I definitely agree with what you said 100%. I feel like, yeah, five or six years ago, I was like, well, time to be a freak outside again. And now I'm just like, oh, cool, like, at least I'm breaking grounds for something, but it's not that weird anymore. Right. Exactly. Definitely. Well, that's awesome. So, getting your throat tattooed, um, did you have it done, like, in the summer, in the winter? Um, I got my throat tattooed in the dead of winter. Okay. Um, I got this tattoo, uh... Three years, it'll be in February. Oh, tight. Um, so I did the outline first and then went back like two weeks later for color, like immediately, because an outline just looked like horrendous. Yeah. I have pictures I can show you. It's <laughs> not a good look. Um, but yeah, so I got it tattooed in the dead of winter. Um, I didn't have a car in the city yet, so I was like riding my bike to work, riding my bike everywhere. <laughs> it was super painful and like the healing process was absolutely horrendous. I can't like, even imagine. Horrendous. I swallow all day. Yeah, I'm, only I'm surprised coffee. that honestly like it didn't fall out at all because Ooh. like it, the way that it healed it, it looks brand new. so scabbed and like so painful just based on like the winter and the elements and like ugh, it was it was not fun. So same with your throat tattoo like you knew you were making this huge commitment there's not much you can do about your throat tattoo as in terms of like concealing it 
Your mom, you can't hide it from your mom anymore. Oh yeah, they, she was not. She lost it, but then now she's very accepting. <laughs> oh yeah, what, we were in the car once and you were like, my mom wants me to send her this selfie I took. Yeah. And I was she, like, go ahead mom. She like is, and in the beginning, she was really like weird about it. And then now like, she got her first tattoo like long after I started getting tattooed. And now she like loves it. And she always calls me about like tattoo ideas and like, she like always is like showing me off on her Facebook to her friends. And she's like, look at my daughter. like. She doesn't care what anybody thinks, like, you know, and she's just, like, Go so ahead, proud and yeah. so excited. So, I got really lucky, but in the beginning, like, I remember her and my grandparents were, like, really upset and, like, super disappointed. And, like, it took a lot of time for them to become, like, accepting of, like, this is who she is and, like, mm -hmm. this is not gonna change. Yeah, like, I still have the allowance to, like, go home and... You know, wear pants if I don't want to talk about my Playboy bunny tattoo. But yeah. you, you, you had to tell them right away. Yeah, I had no choice. And I mean, I live like five hours from my family, so I don't have to see them often. But it's still one of those things. Like when I got like this hand tattoo in July, like I didn't tell anybody, and then posted a picture on Facebook, and like my grandma immediately called me. I was like, "Did you get your other hand tattooed, or is that just like not real?" And I was like, "Oh, I got my other hand tattooed." And she's like, "When are you gonna stop doing this, Charles?" And like hung up. Uh, Grandma, at this point, yeah, like, she's 75. Like she, like every time I get a new one, she's just like, oh, okay, like whatever, like yeah. it's fine. But then she like tells her friends how like cool and great she thinks it is. So it's very like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like that might just be like a generational thing, but it's just grandmas. Yeah, and it's cool. Like sometimes I'll go home and I don't want tattoos to be like the spotlight of conversation. Sometimes I'm like, no. I want to talk to her about this. something else. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's like they always are a topic of conversation now just based on like just conversations I even have with people like walking down the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm just at a point with it where I'm like, okay, like. You have like a little uh, speech. Like yeah. A little thing I have a whole speech in my head that uh -huh. I'm like ready for whenever people are like, hey, what's that? I'm like, if you want to take a look, like go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> like just go for it. Yeah. I have like little anecdotes, especially when I worked at the coffee shop, you might be able to relate. Like, I had little, like, people be like, where do you get your tattoos? And I'd be like, I get them in New York. It gets me out of the house. And people be like, oh. They're like, oh, great, amazing. Yeah, I worked at um, that all-vegan coffee shop for a really long time. Um, and luckily, like, there's so many people that come in and out of there that are, like, tattooed and modified. But even then, still, like, I would get, like, random Instagram message requests that were oh. like, hey, are you the girl with the face tattoo that I saw at Grindcore today? You gave me my coffee. And I was just like... You can't remember? It was yeah, hours I'm ago. I'm like, it was obviously me, dude. Like, there was me and, like, one <laughs> other person working the counter, but, like, stuff like that happens a lot. Like, I'll just get, like, an Instagram request and I, like, look at it and it's somebody being like, hey, saw you walking through Fishtown today. And I'm like... Oh, you probably have missed connections on, uh on Craigslist. I've think. never looked, but I genuinely thought about looking because like, I feel like it would obviously be about me and it would be amazing to see like what people have to say on there. I th So I got one um, at the beginning of the summer and I thought it would be rad. And the guy said, the, the thing was like, saw you reading a book on the train. You had like tattoos and uh, a tote bag of a crying heart. I want to know like, what is your bag crying about? Or something like that. And I was like, who? And it said that in his listing, it said he was 25, and then he messaged me, and he was like, I'm 32, and I was like, you're already out. Yeah, uh, that's no matter who you, you already are. lied. Like, you're already out. No way. So I thought it would be my husband, but really it was a freak. So yeah. you, you're you better off. Yeah. No husbands on Craigslist misconnections. I think that's, like, our new thing we should live by. <laughs> yeah. I didn't meet my husband on Craigslist misconnections. I met him on that. Tinder. <laughs> I met him on Tinder. Dead of winter. You got your throat tattoo. You're mm -hmm. riding your bike all around. At any point, were you like, well, I want to know, were you, the day you got it, you were like, like, I'm, I'm a badass bitch. Were you like, I'm going to get this and look good. Like, what's, what's the steam? Cause I feel like we're, we're like, I don't know. I feel like we're told that like tattoos are fucking tough. Yeah. And when someone's like, yeah, my throat's tattooed. I'm fucking tough. I don't, I don't think that, I mean, I think that you could hold yourself, but I don't think you're a tough person. I think that you're sweet. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like you said, I can definitely like hold myself and like stand my ground on things. And I was a little bit more scrappy when I was younger, which I think everybody is when they're like 18, 19, and, like hormones are flying and like, you're just like crazy. You can't listen to um, Under Oath and not scream. Oh, exactly. Like I would listen to Under Oath in my room and just like imagine like, you know, <laughs> like that's just how it is. But um, I think now like, yeah, I, 
am one of those people, I am like genuinely like really nice and like kind and like pretty soft spoken um, and like will literally give anyone the shirt off my back type of thing. So when people associate it with like being tough and then like they meet me, a big thing people say when they like meet me for the first time in person is like, oh like your personality, like you're so like nice. And like it's always the word nice. And I'm just like, yeah, like you didn't I, think yeah. I would be Yeah, like you didn't think I would be nice? No, like I oh. I'm like really like just genuinely nice and like none of this stuff like makes me feel like tougher or like any like that. Like when I got my third tattooed and I left, like I was like Hell yeah, this is like so sick. I'm so excited about it. But also was like whining because it was like the winter and I biked home with like this wrap around my neck that and I remember hurts. like stiff yeah, neck like, like hitting bumps in South Philly like uh, uh, uh. But yeah, I mean it's one of those things that's never like made me feel like I'm like tough or like a badass or like anything like that. Like it's always just been more like, okay, like I'm still really sweet, like and for the most part they're pretty like feminine on me, so I try to like I think so. I think that you wear them in a way that's like completely unique and I don't know, it doesn't seem like foreign on you. It all fits. That's what I think like my mom's thing with it, like back to my mom is like she was like, now like it just works for you and like it fits you as a person and like I can't imagine you any other way. Cool. So it just like is one of those things I think I wear it well for myself, so and and thank goodness. Right? Imagine <laughs> imagine if I did all this for the rest of my life. Like, I'm probably not gonna wear it well when I'm 70. Like, I'm fully prepared to have, like, some big black blob on my forehead um, by the time I'm, like, 80 years old, but... I just know for a fact that we're both gonna be wearing cat sweaters, so, like... Oh, yeah. The fashion expectation's already so low. Oh, yeah, I wanna, like, embroider, like, a sweater with all of the Ooh. cats on it and just wear that for the rest of my life, so... If you guys see me around in a cat sweater, like, it's gonna be my actual cats on there, so... <laughs> Quasi-fashion icons at 70, breaking all the rules. Yes, that's all we're gonna do, it's gonna happen. Have you ever, like, had a thought, like, oh, I'll just get bangs? Oh, yeah, I actually, like, wear side bangs a lot. Um, well, I had, like, side bangs for my whole scene phase, and I am still pretty much a scene kid anyway. <laughs> uh, but I recently started growing out my bangs, like, a few months ago. Um, but with my side bangs, you can only really see, like, a little... Okay, so do you have any final thoughts? I mean, I feel like the people in the live stream, um... I told them, you know, when I was growing up, the natural progression of a face tattoo was like full arms, full body, and then it seemed like then you worked your way all the way up, and I feel like growing up, the people I saw with face tattoos were like either in a band or were tattoo artists. Yeah. Now I feel like I see a lot of people with like neck tattoos, face tattoos, like baristas, um, like nannies, stuff like that. A lot of things that kind of break that idea I had growing up that like you were Dave Navarro or you were a tattoo artist yeah. and there's no like between you. Travis Barker. Like that's it. Oh, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so um, you're breaking that mold and I feel like it's pretty cool. Like how do you feel about that? Um, yeah, I definitely like think that like with time, I mean there's still plenty of places across the whole country like where having like face tattoos and like hand tattoos and throat tattoos, like it's gonna be impossible to get a job, it's gonna be like impossible to do things. Um, and I get why a lot of people don't do it and like are held back by like their surroundings. Um, but I guess like the one big thing that I can say to people is that like I personally like you do things because you love them and like you wanna love yourself more and that's why I do these things. Um, because like they helped me like learn how to love myself as a person. Um, and I think even when it comes to like jobs and like my future, it is something that I worry about sometimes, but it's people end, with no tattoos worry about it. Right. Like at the end of the day, like it's always going to work out even if it takes some struggling and like that's just how I feel is like, you know, there might be points in my life where I have to struggle because of these decisions, but it's worth it because like my self love is so high at this point that like you never stop being yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh. It's heavy hitting. <laughs> it's just one of those things, like, always make sure that you love yourself as much as you can, and if you don't, and you wanna, like, if you live in the middle of nowhere and you wanna get a face tattoo, and, like, you think that, like, you know, you might have trouble getting jobs, or, like, you might have trouble, like, with your family, like, just remember that, like, you're making the decision for you, and if it's gonna make you love yourself more, then, like, at the end of the day, that's, like, number one priority is you. I think that's really true. I mean... Uh, Self-love has been a lifetime long journey for me, Same. but this it's recent 
so. Yeah. The yeah. day, like, I became on my side, I feel like things became easier and, like, everything is still hard and I had a hard summer and all that stuff, but, like, yeah. when you support yourself and when you believe in yourself, no matter what it takes, you know, if it means, you know, getting some tattoos, if it means, like, having a certain hairstyle, when you believe in yourself, I feel like things around you are easier. Not, right. a, like, they might technically not be, be, but I always know that, like, I'll get through it. Right, and that's how I feel, too, is, like, I mean, I went through, like, you know, like, a pretty bad breakup, and, like, I was, like, in the dating, like, world again, and, like, just kind of doing all that stuff, and then, like, I finally, like, took a step back and, like, realized, like, okay, like, what steps can I take to, like, love myself more so that I'm more comfortable being, like, alone and being me? Um, oh. Yeah, and that's, like, the first thing for me. This is the first summer I can honestly say, like, I'm about to be 25 years old, and, like, I just finally now I'm like, wow, like, I really like myself as a person. Yeah, I'm like, on my side. Yeah, like, I'm on my own side, and, like, I'm my, like, biggest fan, so... Once you get there, like, it's, like, your whole life changes. Support. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> well, Chels, thank you so much for being on the of channel. Um, Anything for you. Oh. Love that, though. <laughs> um, definitely leave your feedback and your comments down below. Uh, Chelsea's on social, so she'll be able to talk to you guys and answer any questions. Yeah. You can follow her on Instagram. I'll have that link down below. And um, thank you so much for, for coming on here. Right beforehand, we talked about uh, Chelsea like has been thinking about wanting to start a YouTube channel. And I think you should fucking go for it. Yeah, I definitely want to. Um, like she said, like she's going to put my social media. So if you guys have any ideas on things that you think would be cool for me to do, like let me know. But also, if you ever have like questions or like you're someone who's like family has like disowned you because you like tattooed your hands or your face or like you did something like please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, I'm always willing to have these conversations like outside of like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Like I'm always willing to talk. So I feel like a million bucks now. right now. Yeah. You remember the episode True Life where the guy gets all of his tattoos removed for his wife? Yeah. I think about that all the fucking oh, time. It's terrible. He should be sitting on this bed. With yeah, us. he should be with us right in the middle so we can let him You're know. Right, like, come on, man. <laughs> But All right, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Bye, Tattoo Talk Tuesday. Give this video a thumbs up if you were into it. Check out Chelsea's social down below. And if it's your first time here, I make videos like this every Tuesday. Thank you so much, and of course, until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.